this video, we're going to create a script that will dynamically focus the camera using the post processing volume depth of field on the object that's in front of the player. First, make sure that you do have a post processing volume set up and actively working in the scene and that the depth of field is turned on that's required for this script to work. We have a script called focus forward and I've attached it here to the camera. Let's go ahead and load up that script. Okay, we're gonna start with some options here. So I'm gonna create a header. Okay, we've got a few options here, the min distance and max distance. This is the minimum distance from the camera for focusing and the maximum distance as well. Anything beyond maximum distance will just get the full focus. And focus speed determines how fast the focus will switch. In this script, I'm going to provide two options. One to use a simple ray cast from the center of the camera. Uh, and then the other option to use a sphere cast. If we use a ray cast, then it's only going to be that one point in the very center of the camera that will detect other objects, which means that if you move off the object just slightly, then it will come out of focus, which might not provide the best results. It depends entirely on your project. The sphere cast, however, will provide a larger surface area in which to detect objects. So if they move slightly off center, they'll still remain in focus for a little bit longer before they get enough off center that they lose focus. We're gonna default to using the sphere cast and you can set the sphere cast radius in the inspector to be larger or smaller, depending on your use cases here. We're also gonna have some private variables just to cache some objects. One of the private variables is a coroutine. We're gonna be using a coroutine for the actual focus pull and this will cache whether the coroutine is active or not. Uh, so we don't accidentally create multiple instances of the code routine. Let's create a property to cache our post-process volume. This property will return the value of get post-process volume. And if we already have the volume sa saved, then we're going to just return that. Otherwise, we're gonna look it up. In this example, we only have one post-process volume, so I'm just going to find the first one in the scene. Your project might have multiple post-process volumes, in which case you might wanna modify this in order to specify exactly which post-processing volume you want to have active. In the rest of the method here, we're going to find all of the post-processing volumes. If there are none, we'll throw a, an error and return null. Otherwise, we'll set the private variable volume to be the first item in the array and return that. And now that we have the volume, we can also grab the depth of field in a property as well. This property will return the private variable depth of field. If that's null, then it's going to set the value and then return that. All right, now let's uh, set our update. So an update, if the volume is null, we're just going to return. Otherwise, we'll check focus. So to check focus, we're going to be doing a ray cast and, uh, and we're going to get a hit back from that. So we need to see if there's a hit. And if there is a hit, then we're going to set our uh, focus distance to that distance of the object we hit. Otherwise, we'll set it to the max distance. All right, so we've created three methods here in the check focus. The first one is calculate hit. This is where we'll actually do the cast, either a sphere cast or a ray cast. And if we have a hit, we'll return that. This is a nullable ray cast hit, meaning it can be a ray cast hit or it can be null. All right, so the value of hit, this Boolean is going to be, if we're using the sphere cast, we're gonna do a sphere cast with the sphere cast radius set here up to a max distance. Otherwise, we're gonna do a ray cast up to the max distance. In both cases, it's gonna be from the center of the camera forward. And then we'll return that value or null if we did not get a hit. And so again, if we didn't get the hit, if the, if the return has no value, then we're gonna switch focus to the max distance. Otherwise, we're gonna calculate the distance and then switch focus to that. So let's go ahead and calculate that focus distance. We're gonna be focusing on the distance of the object we hit, and we're gonna clamp that to be between minimum and maximum distance that we've set in the inspector. Now let's set up the switch focus method. In switch focus, we start by returning if the depth of field value is close enough to the new target distance, or if the target distance we already have set 
is close enough to the new target distance using MathF approximately. Otherwise, we're going to set the target distance to our new target distance. If we haven't already started the coroutine, then we're going to start the coroutine, set focus distance, and assign that to focus coroutine. That way we only have one running at a time. We just need to make sure that at the end of this coroutine, we set it to null. So now set focus distance, we'll track the elapsed time and also cache our start value. And while the elapsed time is less than our focus speed, we're going to set the value of the focus to a alert between the start value and the target based on the elapsed time. And then once we're out of that loop, then we're gonna set the value to be the target distance just to make sure we get to that exact value that we'd like to get to, and then set the focus coroutine to null so that we know we are no longer using the coroutine. So we've assigned focus forward to our camera. Let's go ahead and press play. All right, so now we're up here next to these fruit as we scroll down or as we pan down, we can see our focus is switching. And if we update the sphere cast radius to be a little bit larger, so now we're gonna have a, a quite a large circle in the middle, you can see that the focus starts happening really close to the edge of the screen. And then it comes off at the, when we get to the edge. And if we turn use sphere cast, if we turn use sphere cast off, you can see that we have to get really close to the object itself in order to switch the focus and it immediately comes off when we get off of that. I personally think the sphere cast is the better way to do it in most cases, but it really depends on your project. So now as we walk up to this well, we can see the focus shift between the well and the background as we move around. There you go. Uh, let me know what you think in the Discord, and I look forward to seeing you real soon. Thanks.